So this should be short but sweet. I just want to talk about a couple of useful inequalities when it comes to putting bounds on probabilities, okay? So sometimes you don't know what the actual PDF of a random variable is, but you can measure some stuff about it, like its mean and variance. Can you still put some uh, guesses about what certain probabilities are gonna be, right? So for example, say we only knew that x is non-negative, with mean mu. Can we say anything about, you know, probabilities involving x uh, besides knowing the mean, right? Well, the mean is the expected value of x, which is, in this case, this integral. And I'm starting the integral at zero because I know that this is a positive random variable, okay? Well, I can write this in two pieces, right? This piece, I'm just going to split up for some positive value of a. So for any positive value of a. Okay. So how does this help me? Well, I can say, okay, well, certainly this is at least as much as just the last part. And for every one of these values, x is at least as much as a, right? Which is equal to a times this integral, which is basically like the tail of the CDF starting from a. So what did I learn, right? This is like equal to a times the probability that x is greater than or equal to a. So if I kind of rearrange what I learned here, what I learned is that the probability that x is greater than or equal to a is less than or equal to the mean over a, right? If you look back at this slide and think about it, all I'm doing is I'm moving the a over here and I'm moving things around and I'm saying the probability of this uh, tail of the CDF is less than or equal to this. So this actually gives me something immediately useful, even though I don't know anything about the actual form of the PDF, right? So for example, let's suppose I have a router that crashes if I get more than a thousand packets a second. And I know that the um, average load, so that basically the mean packets to a number of second, is equal to 50. Okay, so can I bound the probability of crash, right? That's like asking, what's the probability that this number is greater than a thousand? Well, it's no more than the mean, which is 50, over a thousand, which is 0 0.05, right? So this is pretty useful, right? I don't need to know anything about the uh, distribution of the packets. All I need to know is that I can bound the probability of crash. Now, it could be that this number is really conservative, right? So here's a case where it's kind of dumb to look at this, right? So let's suppose that in a kindergarten, you know, the average height of a child is, um, you know, three and a half feet. And I want to know what's the probability that a kid is greater than or equal to nine feet tall, right? Now, of course, there are no kids that are nine feet tall, but the, oh, I forgot to tell you the most important thing. This is called the Markov inequality. Duh, sorry about that. So the Markov inequality would be able to put a bound on this as saying, well, this probability is um, no more than this number, even though we know the actual probability is like crazy low, right? So while this is true, it's not a very useful bound, right? We can do better, i.e. we can get a tighter bound if we also know something about the variance of the random variable. So um, suppose that um, if we know the variance, we can do better. For example, let's let 
y equal x minus mu squared. Okay, this new random variable. So the expected value of y is sigma squared. That's how we defined the variance in the first place. And now let's apply Markov to this random variable y, right? Markov says the probability that y is greater than or equal to some number, I'm going to call it a squared, is less than or equal to the expected value of y over that number, which in this case is sigma squared over a squared, right? A different way of looking at this is saying, this is like saying the probability that x minus mu squared is greater than or equal to this value is less than or equal to this. Or I can think about like saying, what's the probability that I'm more than a away from the mean, right? Again, this is kind of like thinking about the long tail of a distribution, right? So this gives a bound on how, how probable it is that x is further away than the mean than some value. It's this number, if I know the variance, this is called the Chebyshev inequality. And since now I have more information, the bound is tighter than the Markov inequality. So let's go back to my example with the kids in the kindergarten, right? So let's suppose that, um, you know, my average kid height is three and a half feet and my standard deviation of a kid is half a foot, right? What does Chebyshev tell me? It tells me the probability that I am, say I wanna ask again about the nine foot tall kid, right? So the probability that I am more than 5.5 away from the mean is the sigma squared over the a squared, right? So this is equal to um, one over 121, which is really small. Right? So this makes a lot more sense. This is a tighter bound, and it's closer to the truth, whatever the truth may be. I mean, the truth is probably like, you know, uh, zero. But basically, the, it goes to show you that it's actually interesting that you can derive some things about probabilities without actually knowing anything about the PDFs. And so we're going to use these inequalities again down the road, and it's good just to have them in your pocket in case you ever need to do some sort of back-of-the-envelope calculation.